Hello, 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 and welcome to the first ever Three Grams Live. Uh, my name is Matt Healy. I will be your host for this evening. And this wonderful man sitting next to me in the box is the man himself, the founder of Irish Malts and Three Grams, Mr. John O'Donovan. How are you doing, John? Very good, Matt. I'm very good. Thank you very much for introducing. Um, there's a lot going on at the moment in the world of Irish whiskey, let alone whiskey. So I'd like to thank everybody who's taking uh, this time to sit down with us and uh, whilst we delve through these three pretty unique whiskies. Um, I suppose for anybody watching for the first time or for people who've been following us for the last while, I suppose the questions you might have are, what is Three Drams and who are we? So as Matt has said, we are the guys behind irishmoss.com. We're about two years into business and, you know, six to 12 months in, we quickly realized in the world of whiskey that whiskey drinkers like sampling and tasting different whiskeys. So it led us to dream up this virtual tasting club long before lockdown. So we jumped through all the hoops to get to this point where we can bring the first episode uh, to you. What is Three Drams? It's a virtual whiskey tasting club. The website will launch next month in November. When you sign up, we'll talk you through once a month, three interesting Irish whiskies, which at least we believe to be pretty interesting or good. Um, so again, thanks to Matt. Um, what else must I say? So as I mentioned, the club will launch in November. Um, this is our last preview. Uh, the three whiskies we have for you on this episode, are number one, a blended malt from Lambay, and quite shortly now, Sabina Sheehan, the global brand ambassador, will come on to chat through that whiskey with Matt. That would be followed by a Clonakilty single cask cognac finished whiskey, which we got bottled, bottled specifically for our website uh, at Cask Strength. And I'm delighted that Paul Corbett, the head distiller at Clon, will be on just after Sabina. And following that will be Morris O'Connell from Wayward Spirits, who's doing great things down in Killarney uh, with the Liberator whiskey. So we have his second batch of his Tawny Poor finish uh, uh, um, release. Other than that, as 3 is not live yet, it's coming next month. This is the last test run. When, when that goes live, if you like any of the whiskeys that you sample with us on the night, one of the member benefits will be free shipping. So there's not many websites out there in Ireland that offer free shipping on some of these pretty much in demand whiskies. So that will be a benefit. To facilitate that for this test run, we'll run that discount through irishmalls.com. It's going to pop up later on here somewhere, but I think the code will be final preview. And if you like any of the whiskies you taste with us tonight, jump on to irishmalls.com where you can get them all with free shipping. Other than that, there we go. I at this point i am going to actually join the audience you guys and i'm going to taste these whiskies with you so i will hand it back to matt who will bring us through the rest of the episode so thanks very much guys and i hope to see you again in november thanks very much john i'm delighted to be here on this uh the first episode uh, john yeah. before you go i will say that uh you know irish malts hasn't been around for all that long but you guys have definitely made your name for uh the more unique and short run uh, single cask special editions this definitely seems to be the, the corner of the market that maybe intentionally maybe otherwise you've kind of cornered um, and I think that three drams is something that will very much lend itself to um, experimenting with some of the the kind of more interesting and, and harder to, to get whiskies around Ireland I know in in just tonight's tasting I believe a single cask from yourselves um, and then two new release whiskies that most people won't have had their got their hands on at the moment I think that's a super exciting service um and also yeah. go, go ahead well just to to um you know to continue on that point if people are wondering what is going to be in every month you know we're going to select three whiskies it's going to be irish whiskey dominated to fall in line with our website you know i think you'll see everything uh from new make spirit all the way up to single cask and everything in between in december we already have a whiskey lined up which won't be on sale till second quarter next year so 
we'll try to stay ahead of the curve um, and we're going to deliver some um, some really interesting drams. Um, there will be the option on the website, Matt, with the launches as well. You don't have to subscribe or join the club, but you will be able to take part on a month to month basis, just, you know, on an ad hoc basis. So also in November, we'll have a few other goodies. We have a few, you know, we have a few branded bits and pieces and, I, you know, we're going to wait till next month to kind of let them go. So thank you to everybody who's signing in so far. Um, I saw Shane McCarthy pop up there. I think Dahi. So, hey, guys. Um, other than that, Matt, I think that's yeah. it, is it? Uh, well, Omar has dropped in as well, giving you a bit of slagging as well over the accents. So I think uh, absolutely a great place to be able to kick off, get started. John, as you said, you're going to sit back, relax, enjoy these few drams. Um in the background, if anyone has any questions specifically for the Irish Mall Support slash Three Drams guys, uh, do feel free to ask in the, the comments. If I can't answer them, they'll be able to answer them for you in type. Uh, but for you, John, thank you so much. Okay. Um, um, we're going to pop um, off now onto our first whiskeys. So as John said a little bit earlier on there, we have three very exciting new whiskeys to be able to show you here. Uh, the first tonight is something that I am super excited about trying uh the lambay malt irish whiskey and um, so to talk uh, to us all about this i would love to introduce uh, Miss sabine sheehan uh welcome to the show how are you doing hi. hi matt thanks for having me not a problem at all long time no see i know um, uh so sabine your uh title with the company is kind of twofold or perhaps even two titles at this point um for those people out there that don't know you why don't you give a little bit of background as to as your role with lambay Okay, so um, yeah, in this particular role this evening, I am the global brand ambassador. So I'm the person that kind of travels around to different markets and tries to induct people into the, the, the taste of Lamb Bay. Um, and uh, when I'm not traveling and when I'm not doing uh, shows like this or tastings, I'm also the senior brand manager. Um, and basically uh, the, the first employee of the company when we started back in 2018. So um, like all small companies, Matt, you know, you wear many hats, but um, there's nothing that gives me greater pleasure, though, than doing the tastings and being able to be a passionate advocate for whiskey, which is what I am. Fantastic. So um, I suppose for those out there who don't know, how long has Lambay been on the scene? Uh, not long, really, at all. We launched in uh, February 2018. Um, so, yeah, it's it's still young. We're still within the kind of two year mark um, and obviously uh, lots has happened um, and growing at a good rate I think I mean we're in 30 markets now um, we're making good headway with with different uh, new product developments as well for the future and yeah so so for a young company we've done quite a bit in the time that we are here yeah fantastic so for everyone that is joining along this is the pack that most of you should have in front of you I think Sabine you have yours in front of you as well uh, on the inside, you'll have three different uh, whiskeys lined up here. You also have your whiskey card here. So we are starting in the most sensible numerical left through right. So um, let me see now. I've absolutely I've knocked everything over beside me in pure, purely professional form. So we're on whiskey number one here. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, but the one thing I know about whiskey tastings is people get very restless if they don't have whiskeys in the glass. So everyone who is joining along with us with the whiskeys, do feel free to pour into your glass because I already have mine here. Um, so exactly. Um, so feel free to pour in, have a little nose of it, have a little sip. Don't drink it all because we will talk about it a little bit more. Um, but just very quickly, uh, because we are here to talk about this specific release, but very quickly, Lambe, um, I say somewhat in Ireland, a quite a famous island off the coast of Dublin. I actually, if it was daylight, I could see it directly outside my window of my apartment here. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm not... I'm not too far away. Um, the company itself uh, is an independent bottling company that has ties to uh, Camus Cognac in France, I believe. Uh, why don't you give us a quick, just, you know, top line uh, rundown of, I suppose, where, where it comes from and, and the, the company today. Sure. Um, so I suppose the, 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 the founders of the company, the concept comes from uh, Cyril Camus, who is the president of kind of Camus Cognac in France. So they wouldn't be a very well-known brand in Ireland, but they are one of the last kind of family-owned cognac houses in France. And they go back to 1863. So there's kind of five generations family-owned 
cognac expertise on that side. And then they've collaborated with the Bering family, uh, Alexander Bering, who lives on the island of Lambe. And basically the two guys um, came up with this wonderful idea to you know, invent a, a new type of whiskey, focus on maritime maturation, and of course then utilize the casks from Camu Cognac as the core and um, finishing USP of what we do. So these two guys came together. We basically then buy our liquid stock from craft distilleries around Ireland, independence preferably. Um, we like to work with family owned and family run um, uh, distributors and suppliers. And what we do then is we basically, everything about Lambe is cognac cask finished to some degree. So we really want to kind of own that particular uh, element. So I'm really excited as well to see for the clonic guilty tasting how um, people react to that as well, because as you know, Matt, cognac was used in its barrel form for maturing whiskey a long, long time ago. And there seems to be this little bit of a resurgence now and interest in it. So that's what Lambe whiskey do. Um, and we're a small team. We're three people and uh, we're based out of Dublin. OK, and the idea of the company is to be uh, an independently bottled brand sourcing from both aged stocks and uh, new make stocks to lay down both in exactly. your on land warehouses as well as your uh, your uh, island. Your, uh, yeah. island warehouses as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So what what casks make it out to the island uh, and how difficult is it to get the casts to and from the island? Okay, so the only whiskey we mature on the island is single malt. Um, okay. And uh, of course, the island is only three miles off the coast of Dublin, but we constantly have a battle with uh, time and tides because everything we do in terms of bringing casks from France onto the island, taking casks off the island, bringing it down to our bottling and blending lab, um, taking water off the island, which we also use in, the, in our whiskey, is all kind of circumnavigating around tides and the sea. Um, and I never thought it would be so complicated. It is uh, certainly an adventure. Um, most days we have planned, we've got casks waiting on the main shore to go and sometimes you just can't get out there. Um, so it, it's always a, a bit of an adventure in terms of our production story. But nevertheless, on the island, we have our bonded warehouse. Uh, which used to be the old r &I lifeboat houses that you see the kind of white buildings if you're close to Skerries and Port Marnock. So we basically knocked through to all of those and they are actually perfect conditions for cask maturation. Um, it's, it's mild, it's always one or two degrees warmer than, than Ireland, believe it or not. So it has this kind of unique microclimate already there. And of course, it's, 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 it's a nature reserve. There's no pollution. It's, um, there's more animals living on the island than human beings. It's completely off grid. So everything we do is around sustainability. And of course, the objective there is just to let our whiskey sleep in peace and quiet with no pollutants and absorb all of the maritime conditions and winds that are literally bashing off the side of the warehouse. Absolutely. And you do mention the animals on the island, I suppose, Land Bay being most famous for uh, not only its wallabies, but also the puffins that adorn a lot of your branding and your bottles as well. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I don't. I don't blame you for missing them. It's confusing because this camera is flipped. I know. It's kind of. Yeah. This way. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean. Uh, okay. The, the island has um, wallabies on it as a probably more unusual uh, animal, and uh, of course we've got domestic animals as well. There's a herd of fallow deer. There's um, over 120 species of bird, I think. Um, and one of the most, I suppose, unusual little birds that are there are the puffins. So um, many people ask, why didn't you put a wallaby on the label of your bottle? And we thought, well, then maybe you might be confused with being Australian in some way, or it would just be a bit too typical. Um, but we felt that the puffin is a much more quirky, little adventurous uh, type of uh, character that certainly reflects what we're doing. and. Uh, it's a little bit eccentric as well, so he plays a big role in our in our logo and in our story. Yeah, it, cre it creates a nice. Uh, there's a, there's a fun a fun element to the brand that I think that it comes with that, which I don't think a lot of whiskey brands can do naturally, which I think is quite cool. Um, yeah, we've got a we've got a very kind of eccentric background on the island. There's loads of stories that date back even pre the bearings. They're only really there since 1904. 
Um, but before that, the island was an abundance of, of tales of shipwrecks and piracy and, um, and, and even a school at one stage. And many people around North, North County Dublin have generations of contacts with the island, you know, from a tradesman perspective or, you know, it, it certainly has a long history with North County Dublin for sure. Fantastic. So um, before we hop into the whiskey now, I think in proper, I, I presume this makes quite a difference from your, your previous roles, because I presume most people here won't know that uh, yourself and myself used to work in the Jemison brand homes. Uh, you obviously in a much more senior position to me, but I do recall me wrecking your head on multiple occasions in the brand homes. Uh, I, I believe you were a uh, sales and marketing manager for the brand homes for Jemison as well. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I had a yeah. previous life. Um, that's now nearly two years, three years ago. Yeah. So yeah. I spent nine years working with Irish distillers um, and, you know, Matt yourself. I mean, you have the access to, to the masters, the knowledge, the heritage, the history. Um, and it's something that just fed my passion for whiskey. Uh, yeah. You know, you, can't, you could not not but be absorbed by it. Um, and I'm forever thankful for that, you know. And, uh, and yes, I remember the days when you'd be asking me questions. And, and I always knew that that guy's going to go far. <laughs> or, or annoy you enough uh, to, to get kicked <laughs> out of there. Who knows? Who knows? So uh, probably a, a great uh, moment to delve deep into the whiskies uh, here. Now, you mentioned before that the kind of uh, the DNA of Lambe whiskies is this signature cognac cast that you get from uh, Camus. Um, so what we have in front of us is the Lambe uh, malt Irish whiskey. Uh, I love the name because it plays exactly into the, the Irish whiskey technical files definition of what this is. Uh, yeah. This is... To any other uh, whiskey category would be a blended malt, um, which is why we don't have the word single, but there is no category of blended malt in Irish whiskey. Exactly. So we are have the Lambay malt Irish whiskey. So give us a rundown. How many uh, uh, different uh, single malts do we have in this glass here? Okay, we're talking uh, about a minimum of three distillates, single malt distillates in here. Um, as I say, we we really love to source um, liquid that is necess not necessarily always about age or it needs to be uh, or 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 typicity it's really about how it's going to work within the cognac cast and i'll talk about that in a second so this was really an experiment for us to kind of move away from what we did with the previous two skews the lambe small batch and the single malt was we really wanted then to introduce um a malt a blended malt that is both double and triple distilled which is quite complex because, of course, the triple distillation gives you the smoothness of what you're looking for. The double distillation gives you kind of more the richy, spicier notes. So this was something unique for us to play with. And then bringing those together, as well as taking single malt from the island into one particular blend um, and then finishing it in our signature French old cognac casks. So it was certainly a challenge. And, and I think on the nose, it, it's obviously what you're getting is is that lovely, you know, malt, which you'd expect from a, a blended malt or a, even a single malt. But what I find quite interesting on this, it, it is a young whiskey, Matt. I mean, it's it's average of five years old, four to five years when we combine our distillates into this. Um, but what's unique about this is, is there's kind of a ripe banana tone to it. There's just something like the floral notes are there. It's quite, quite aromatic. Um, um, but with this, Addition of the double distillation um, as, as, a, as a different type of distillate in this blend, we're getting then, a, you know, a little note of what we call fig. Now, that's completely subjective to our, our viewers this evening. I'm really curious to see what they think about it. So, um, slauncha, well, everybody. Exactly, slauncha. Have a sip now, lads, and we're on the first, first gram here. Mm. There's a nice coating in the mouthfeel nice little back note of spice and we upped the ante a little bit on this Matt by put, making it 43 percent the last two uh, in our portfolio are 40 and that was really because we listened to consumer feedback from our single malt because the guys were saying and the lassies were saying you know I'd like to taste your whiskey with just a bit of a heavier punch in it just give us a little bit higher ABV so we listened to it and and you know something I think it really does lend to it yeah. Um, for for me, I'm getting a really nice kind of um, 
almost like a sherbet lemon on the nose, a little white peach, kind of some little tropicalness coming through, I think probably from more of your cognac expression um, in there. Mm. Mm. Uh, not not all of the malts in this, though, have a cognac finish, or are they vatted at the end? They are all vatted at the end. In a cognac cask or for vodka? In a vodka? cognac cask, okay. yeah. So it, it's literally, and trying to understand this, we, we can only create in small batch. So it's taking small volumes of that, three distillate blend, bringing it then into a cognac cask, and we would maybe first fill and second fill within those cognac casks to reach the, you know, the aromatic profile we're looking for. Um, the first time round when we were testing it, the first cognac cask, it depends as well, we're not yet necessarily using young casks or particularly old casks, they're kind of midway for this, this, this finish. Um, and the finish is really only around six, four to six weeks in terms of a cognac cask. Um, the richness of the casks that we've used from France, we noticed delivered such a strong punch of cognac flavor in it that if we left them in any bit longer, it kind of tended to move more into what was our single malt pre profile before this. And we wanted to keep something different on this. So I think when you're saying sherbet and, and a little bit of that kind of, there's a sweetness to it, which is quite mm -hmm. nice. Um, that's really the unique part of, of what this is. This is a kind of a master blend in itself. Not many people would dare to do it. Um, and it is labor intensive, but we, we think that it, it just adds at something different. I get lots of lovely coconut on it. Um, and there's still that kind of dried berries you'd expect from a, you know, the cognac, uh, fruit element in the whiskey. But, um, there's a little exotic note in that, that kind of a cardamom or, a, you know, um, I just find it slightly Eastern almost in on the nose. It's mm. it's different. So to everyone who's watching at home, do take this as your chance to ask all the questions because we do have basically only a finite amount of time to talk to each of our guests. Um, but there are some uh, questions coming in here. Uh, John Kumi is wondering, uh, what volume are your cognac casks or do they differ? Um, good question, John. Um, yeah, cognac casks are usually 600 litres. They're big babies. They're not like your standard bourbon barrels. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're somewhat, you know, more voluminous than, than the, the bourbon barrels. Um, they're heavier transport. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they, they cost a lot of money, but, uh, we're lucky we have the, the resource of, of Camu and, and our philosophy around our casks is always cask on, never cask off. So we, we kind of regenerate them and we actually then, when we're finished with a period of time of maturation, we send them back to Camu where they're treated and they're used in the making of brandy, which is something interesting. So the wood story goes on and on and it's something that always kind of fascinates me. Um, yeah. We have a Roel Uri here saying, uh, what is the price point? Uh, I believe it's around 50 euro recommended retail. Is that correct? Yeah, spot on, Matt. Um, we wanted to kind of create something that was in between, in terms of positioning the small batch, which is around 40, the single malt was 60. And then this uh, this this malt is, is positioned right between the two. Uh, 50 euro in Ireland, it'd be a little bit cheaper in Europe, I'd imagine, different VAT rates and all. Um, but, you know, uh, I think it's a really good uh, valued whiskey for that price point. Um, bearing in mind that our single malt is going to be running out shortly of, of that particular batch, the one in the red box, you might be familiar with it. Um, and people ask, so what, like, why are you getting rid of it? Where is it going? And, and I feel a duty of care to explain that um, we're not a distillery. So we can't, we don't have the resource of aged single malt just sitting on our island where we can create, you know, thousands and thousands of litres of whiskey. And that single malt that we had was a very specific type and when we went to market to try and find another single malt to match it, to be honest, we just couldn't find it. And rather than just, you know, put a label on another bottle and call it single malt and, and kind of try and wing it, that's just not our, our philosophy. So we're very happy then to, to tell you live tonight that um, as of next year, January, we're going to continue our single malt series, but they're going to come out in vintages. So you'll have a single malt vintage coming out early next year. Um, again, much more intense cognac finish. And each one that comes out after that will be varying cask finishes. So it's kind of exciting. But the the, 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 the consistent brands you're going to have now in the market are Small Batch Blend and this Lambe Malt, which I think is, is, is a really beautiful whiskey. 
Absolutely. And do keep your questions coming in there, guys, in the last couple of minutes. Uh, as one of the O'Donovans just pulled up there, uh, I don't know why that won't come up for me. There you go. Uh, Paul McDermott said, any chance we can broadcast this on Twitter? Paul, we are broadcasting on Twitter on the Irish Malts Twitter page. So if you're over on Twitter, do feel free to check us out there. Um, a lot of comments coming in about this. People loving the dram. Uh, nice finish. Very creamy mouthfeel. Uh, Rosanna Goswell dropping in saying the higher ABV and the sweetness. I do note that both of us are sporting her two glasses at the moment. Um, Absolutely. I have, I have my gold rim here. I think you might have the platinum rim. Look at you being very yeah, fancy. This is, um, a bespoke platinum rim, rim design we did with, with uh, Rosie. So um, this is going to be available on our online shop soon. So people will have a chance to buy their own. There you go. Um, I shan't. I shan't plug my. <laughs> I shan't bring up my own platinum rich glasses at this point. It feels really encroaching. I know. I just, just want to show off at this point. Um, so, if people um, are, I suppose, going to keep an eye out for uh, the kind of the next steps of of the Lambay story. Um, I know you have a new uh, brand ambassador for domestic and I believe Europe as well, Mr. Sean Fen Fenny. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. He just started two weeks ago. Yeah, it was he on the island today? I think I saw on social media. Yeah, somewhere. so um, it was brilliant because today we were bringing casts out to the island. Beautiful morning, like seven thirty a.m., heading out the Rush Estuary. You know, um, we can only fit maybe 10, 12 casks on the boat, the Shamrock, out to Lamb Bay. Um, and uh, yeah, he was he was just delighted to be part of it. It's it's a really unique experience to see that happening. So yeah, um, the weather was good today. We were lucky. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, well, uh, if people are looking for this um, to purchase this online, give us another look at what what the bottle looks like there. If you have one handy, uh, fantastic. Um, so the bottle, um, we really kind of um, the packaging is is quite beautiful. I think it looks really premium, and we brought a lot of the illustrative elements on stories of the island onto the outside of the box. Um, it's it's completely one hundred percent recyclable, of course, um, and it's something I think that looks really good on shelf and it makes a nice gift. So, of course, I'm going to plug it, but uh, Christmas is coming, so keep an eye on this. And we're really delighted that Irish Malls has supported us for this product um, as, a, as a young company, a uh, new brand. To get exposure is, is wonderful, so we really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I, and uh, I actually suggest that as a, a friend of mine was going to her work colleague's wedding. He was a whiskey drinker. She didn't know how to get him. So I got her to pick up a bottle of that uh, the other day. Thank so you so much. Thank you so well, much. I, I, to I you. figured I figured it'd be so, she had no idea what he drinks, and I know that he physically couldn't have had that. It was just released, so I That's thought that true. might be a good one. And also a nice beginning, middle, and end of a story. Paul McDermott joined us back on Twitter, saying he's <laughs> delighted that he's no longer watching on Facebook and he's in his preferred medium. Um, the last couple of comments coming through: uh, Stephen McMullen saying it's a great addition to the Lambay range. Uh, loving the cognac finish. If you weren't loving the cognac finish, Lambay might not be the whiskey, but I'm. <laughs> um, and I suppose uh, this is just going to start rolling out now, available in Ireland, uh, continental Europe. Um, I know you guys are killer at the, the global travel retail, obviously not the year to be traveling too much, but I've actually found uh, bottles of uh, uh, Lambay in uh, Dubai, Singapore, Japan. Uh, I seem to find it all over the world. So obviously Camus premium this, especially in the East, uh, has has got some good shelf space, but yeah. um, are, yeah. are, for this blended malt, are we going to see it across the world, or is it more of a domestic European release? Um, at the moment, uh, in Ireland, it's only like literally two weeks in the market, um, primarily with uh, Irish malts. Celtic whiskey have it as well. We're now trying to send it into the off-premise account of Ireland, um, and of course, it's going to be in Germany from this week. France as well, rolling it out there. Russia um, is a big market for us. It won't be in the US until next year. Um, and of course, it's going to go all the way out towards uh, China and Japan by February, March. So we have, uh, yeah, we've got, we've got hopefully good reach with this one. Fantastic. So bottled at 43%, blended malt of three different whiskeys with a fantastic cognac finish. Yeah. With a recommended retail price of approximately 50 euro in the Irish market with its lovely designed and foiled box. Uh, thank, you. And thank you so much for your time this evening. And uh, to everyone out there, thank you for enjoying dram number one. Don't go anywhere. We have two more drams coming up. Uh, if anyone has any questions, do drop them into the comments. Uh, Sabine, I presume we can direct comments to you later on uh, for other people. Come on Twitter. Let's give us a shout. 
happy to answer any of your questions, folks. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so uh, we will be able to be moving on ever so slightly now. Uh, dram number two uh, is a very exciting whiskey we have this evening. Uh, so this is uh, an Irish malt exclusive. Um, the Clonakilty Cognac finish at cast strength. Another, I'd say, small victory for the cast strength crusade out there. But to talk about this fantastic release is Mr. Paul Corbett, Master Distiller from Clonakilty Distillery. Paul, welcome to the show. Hi, How are you? How's it going? Good, thanks. I'm delighted to have you on the show. Um, whoops. The, the folly of having three glasses next to each other. Um, thank you for uh, everyone who's been joining in so far. Um, I'm delighted to be able to chat to you. Um, I don't think I've ever spoken to you on the online medium yet, so um, I'm delighted to have you here on the show. Um, so I suppose for everyone out there, um, we are looking at Dram Iverago, uh, Iverago right there. Um, this is a cast strength uh, blend, uh, also following in the cognac theme. So Paul, why don't you give us a, a little rundown of uh, what is in Dram number two? And I welcome everyone to pour into the glass, but don't drink it all yet. Have your sips, have your nose, but we will go through it uh, for a little bit later on in the discussion. But Paul, please tell us a little bit about what's in the glass. Yeah, so this is a blended whiskey. It's 40% uh, 2008 malt and 60% 2010 grain. So when I'm uh, going to try and think of what casks I'm going to need for the finishing uh, for the year, we do a cognac cask finish in, uh, in our distillery exclusive in the shop. So when I'm thinking what I need for the next year to finish, I'm always kind of because whiskey is a bit of a long game and trying to think maybe two years ahead, what would be interesting and kind of a fun release to have. So I uh, decided I needed four casks to do our, uh, for the year to do our uh, cognac finish. So I filled five and I filled them on the very first day of our uh, Atlantic warehouse being open. So these are the very first casks that were ever filled by Clannacildi Distillery. So this cask was sitting for 22 months up in our uh, Atlantic warehouse. So yeah, it's a, a cask, it was dear to my heart actually, and I was pretty sorry to see it go since it was the very first cask I filled for uh, for the company. Well then, a very special release indeed. Um, so why don't you give us a little bit of background uh, before we deep dive into the actual whiskey itself. Uh, I believe it was at the Clonacilty Distillery uh, start, started uh, distilling, was it in March this year or was it a little bit before that or have I got my ears wrong there now? Uh, um, March 2019. 2019, sorry, there you go. Yeah. I knew I, as soon as I said that, I knew I had that off by about a year. Um, but yeah, so you guys have been uh, quickly uh, distilling away and, and making a good bit of noise having a one... Uh, world's best blend at the World Whiskey Awards with your uh, your double cast with the Neoc as well finished. Uh, tell us, this was a little bit about what's going on in the distillery uh, at the moment, what you guys are focusing on uh, apart from these 22 month uh, cognac finishes. So yeah, in the distillery at the moment, we're focusing on just doing uh, pot still distillates. So primarily I'll do, uh, since we uh, grow our own uh, barley on the uh, Michael Scully's farm, who's our founder, I do two different uh, distillates, usually 40% of our own uh, raw barley and 60% malt. And then I do the, the, the opposite. I use 60% of our own raw barley and 40% malt. And uh, I do these two uh, different ratios. So in the future, I can blend either a heavier, uh, oilier pot still with that higher proportion of raw barley. And I could make a fruitier, lighter uh, uh, whiskey using the the sixty percent malted barley, forty percent uh, malt. Um, uh, recently, we won the best uh, new make in the world at the same uh, Irish new make in the world at that same World Whiskey Award. So I'm really happy that in the first year we it's kind of validated that we're making some good uh, spirit. And if we put that into some good wood in a few years, I think we're guaranteed to have some pretty good whiskey coming out. Fantastic. So what, what does the wood program look like down in Clannacilty at the moment? Uh, so the majority of our new make will go into um, uh, ex-bourbon barrels. Also try to put about 10% into our neoc casks. They are uh, 
uh, hand shaved recharred uh, Bordeaux red wine barrel. So uh, it's European oak. And then I also fill any, say, third or fourth fill uh, casts I've been using for finishing. So I've spilled some cognac, port, uh, and rum with, uh, with our new make as well. So the Neoc being kind of down the down the lines of the kind of the famous uh, Jim Swan STR, but where you're using the kind of uh, the Mouton Rothschild, uh, and maybe red wine barrels. I might be wrong on the producer there, but that's the kind of style with the Neoc. Um, it, it creates a fantastic finish on your on your um, uh, on your blended whiskey. I think uh, very well deserved accolade at the World Whiskey Awards. Uh, I know I very much enjoyed that whiskey. Um, but I suppose it's uh, about time to jump into this whiskey. Um, so why don't you break it down for us a little bit? I know that we have some uh, quite old distillates in here. Um, yeah, so the malt proportion, which is 40%, is uh, 2008. And the grain, which is 60%, is uh, 2010. Okay, and it's all bourbon matured before being, is it married and put into cognac or individually matured in cognac? No, no, uh, yeah, they're all bourbon before, then I marry them and uh, put into cognac. So this is cask strength, so it's um, it'll be a little spicy, but it should keep in that maximum cognac flavor. Yeah, for me, this, I, uh, it was funny, as I was in the middle of sipping it, I, it took me a moment to even remember it was cast strength. It's very palatable. Uh, what is it, 55.8, I believe, on my... Uh, 55.8, yeah. Card. So um, when, I'm going to, um, when I'm going to blend, like, a special uh, whiskey like this, I don't... Our, our, um, our brewery cast finishes we do in the US, I don't go into it with um, an ABV in mind that it's going to end up in. I'll do a series of dilutions... And I'll pick the ABB that I think lends itself best to that whiskey. So with the with single casks, I always like to release them at cask strength, not necessarily because it's the best flavor um, for the whiskey, but I think it's nice to leave uh, people because I think cask strengths are um, generally bought by more uh, people who are whiskey enthusiasts. Yeah. And I'd like to give them the opportunity to... Um, dilute and pick out the best ABV for themselves. So with this one, what what do you think uh, for the people at home, what should they be looking for in terms of, of flavor profile in this? Because this is a, uh, it, while both cognac finishes between the, the Lambe and this, this is an entirely different kettle of fish. Um, there's a lot going on in this glass for me, but what, what should people at home be trying to dig out of, of the glass here? I think there's a lot from, say, from the old 2008 malt, you're getting kind of leather and vanilla. And from that cognac finish, you're getting some of those darker caramel, chocolate, coffee notes coming through. Mr. Uh, Porik Call, uh, <coughs> dropping in from Florida. Vitam Porik, Vitam. Um, so uh, the cast strength, we say, definitely getting a shout out. And on the palate, uh, what do you what do you think uh, people should be looking out for? Because there's a huge amount of flavor coming through on the palate on this. Yeah, again, you're getting some of that chocolate, leather, just more dried fruits on the palate, like dried cherries and figs. Well, I find that very interesting because even on the nose, I'm getting kind of almost a stewed cherry. But on the palate, definitely a cherry flavor coming through, maybe even kind of an almond coming through a little bit there as well. But... The uh, cherry is, is definitely something that doesn't become expressed in Irish whiskey distillates all that much. It's quite interesting to see uh, that come through on, on the palate. Actually, um, with the, the new make, uh, a lot of what I'm focusing on is trying to get um, more dark fruits into it. So hopefully uh, look out for some more dark fruit cherry whiskeys coming in two to three years. <laughs> Fantastic. So we have a few people coming in with their tasting notes. Uh, Matt uh, coming through says coconut and caramel on the nose and palace dark chocolate and spice. Um, I no issues with the, those tasting notes. Um, Gareth coming through as well. He's getting a lot of coconut and milk and cream on the nose, uh, which is quite cool. A lot of the viscosity being noted as well. Um, David, so, and this is also confusing me as it goes along because we have Dave Cummins and Dave, we've David Cummins and David Cummings both messaging in at the same time. Um, 
So it's going to throw me once or twice. I, but uh, getting uh, notes of coffee on the nose uh, and with the finish. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot going on in this glass. Um, so how many uh, how many bottles were released for this? Because I know it was an exclusive. And it was a single cask as well. So it's obviously not going to be a, an infinite amount of bottles uh, released on this one. Uh, no, I think we only managed about two hundred sixty-five bottles. At cast strength, 700 mils. That's that's a pretty good yield from the cask. What size cognac cask would it have been when you're filling? Do you remember? Most of the casks we, uh, cognac casks we buy would be a uh, 15-year-old hogshead, so 250 liters. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty decent yield from a hogshead, all right? Um, and remember, guys, uh, as we're going along, do throw in any of your questions for any of our guests. Um, this is the time to ask. Um because obviously, as I mentioned earlier on, we do have a finite amount of time with each of our guests. We do have a lot to get through. Um, but I suppose if people are going to be keeping an eye out for uh, more releases coming along the lines with Clonic Kilty, are we likely to see more cognac casts, or is that going to be more, as you said earlier, the distillery exclusives? Um, or kind of what kind of more things we're going to be able to see coming from from yourselves? Yeah, I just did a new batch of the Kanya cask as the distillery exclusive, so that's available now. Um, coming in the future, uh, I always have a few of these, like I said, when I'm thinking of uh, what I need for finishing, I'm also filling one or two extra for the long-term maturation. So I have a few unusual, uh, say, long-term matured port, uh, river saltas, uh, recently filled some rum casks, uh, as well, so there's a few uh, extra finishes coming. There'll also be some uh, brewery uh, collabs we've done with the US, some limited releases of, of those in Ireland. Oh, fantastic. And how many uh, collaborations collaborations have you done at this point with the US breweries? Because there's been quite a few. Yeah, I think we're at, uh, it must be six now, I think. Fantastic. And from a, from a logistics perspective, um, from working on, on my own beer cask finishes, uh, they're hell to work with. Uh, just with bacteria and beer and wood, they love to get intermingled. Uh, from a uh, logistics perspective, I presume it takes a large amount of, of organization to get those casks disgorged and then ship back to Ireland fresh for, for refilling. Yeah, as, as soon as the brewery in the US is emptying those casks, we'd have DHL on standby to pick them up. And then they're air freighted to Ireland rather than shipped on a ship so they get here as soon as possible and filled as soon as possible as well. Wow, air freighting the casks. That must be the most unique uh, delivery that DHL are making on that week anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, Debbie, I know it's confused a few of the people uh, customs in the airports coming in. All right. What the hell are these things? Hmm. And do you originally, uh, like, where does the actual wood come from? Do you guys ship uh, Clamacilty casks to the States to be filled then and brought back? Or are you sourcing wood in the state <clears throat> uh, to bring back into, into Ireland after being filled to the beer? So the breweries would source the casks in the U.S. first and fill them with beer. They'll come over to us, uh, we'll fill them with whiskey, and we'll then send those casks back again to the, the U.S. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, uh, it makes, makes a lot of sense in, in terms of logistics and, and very, very cool. Um, I'm loving this uh, finish in the glass, uh, and I see a lot of other people are, out there are as well. Uh, Dahi is wondering, uh, comparing uh, your cognac finish here at 55.8, what did the distillery exclusives come in at for the cognac casks? Uh, the distillery exclusive is 47. Okay, so you're seeing an entirely different world of this distillate uh, in in between the two exclusives. So that's that's quite cool. And I do believe that there are a few, I think the last few remaining bottles of this are on sale uh, on the Irish Malts website. And as we said, we will have uh, codes up for free shipping uh, a little bit later on. And I see you and Patterson uh, dropping in as well from the distillery, uh, answering some of those questions. Um, so Beardy Dave, uh, Dave Cummins, not David Cummings, uh, wants to know, uh, how do you find aging in the cognac casts? Uh, do, you, do you develop steadily, or is it more of a kind of a, a more urgent wave in the terms of maturation flavor? Uh, with the cognac casts, yeah, they do need monitoring quite a bit. There can be, depending on how wet the cask uh, is, there can be a real rapid onset of, of uh, flavor and then tapers off a little. But for, well, this is a single cast, but for the distillery, it's a blend of uh, 
first and second bill casts. So I'll monitor how the first uh, is comparing to the second. The second's obviously going to be a lot slower, and then blend them when I think the casts have reached a, uh, a perfect flavor. So for this, it was 22 months, but the blend, um, the blend is less. It's about 19 months first fill and about a year second fill cast. Okay, so you're getting a, a completely different world of, of the cognac expressions uh, between the different products. So that is very cool. And as I said, and you see the little ticker going across the bottom of the screen that ads are throwing up every now and again. Uh, to get your free shipping on any of these bottles that we're talking about tonight. I said there are a few of these left. Um, yeah, there are a few of these left on the Irish uh, Dram, uh, sorry, Irish Malt's website. Um, I'm getting a little bit uh, confused or distracted here because we had uh, Beardy Dave, David Cummins, saying that he was Beardy Dave, and now we have David Cummings coming back to say he's handsome, Dave. So we're just going to have, a, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of fun with this tonight. Um, but I'm delighted to see the engagement that's going on, Paul, here uh, on the Cognac cast. 55.8% uh, uh, single cast, exclusive for Irish malts. Uh, 22 months in Cognac, um, a 2008 malt, 2010 grain. Uh, what did you say the breakdown of them were? Is it 70% grain? 60% uh, grain, 40% malt. Absolutely fantastic. I very much appreciate you taking the time to join us here this evening. Um, I have a lovely amount left in my glass. I'm sure a few people have uh, have polished theirs all, but I have a little bit more to go, but I'm going to enjoy this very much. Um, and I very much appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on. And I do hope uh, if people have more questions that we might be able to point them uh, either to your direction or to you and uh, to find out a little bit more about Clonic Hilti uh, Irish Whiskey. Yeah, excellent. No problem. Thanks a lot, Matt. Perfect. Thank you kindly. Um, I do very much appreciate everyone's questions coming through. Uh, don't forget that our guests are here to not only talk about the whiskeys uh, and their distilleries and brands, um, but to answer any questions you have about them as well. Um, which brings me to dram number three. Um, so this is the Liberator Tawny Port Batch 2. Um, this is... If any of you are following um, my website, potstill.com, batch one of the Liberator is a whiskey that uh, took me by complete surprise. Um, this I made my uh, quarantine whiskey of the month, I think, for March. Um, I'm going to be completely biased in this whole thing because I love this bottle. Um, I have batch two right here, but batch one, I love the bottle. I love the labels. I love the cork. And I absolutely adore the whiskey, which is why I made it my whiskey of, of the month for lockdown, which is why it makes me absolutely overjoyed to welcome Mr. Morris O'Connell. How are you doing, Morris? Welcome to the show. Hi, Hi Morris. I might as well go home now. <laughs> You've done my <laughs> bit for me. Thank you. Thanks well, for having have, me on. Not a problem at all. We have three very uh, exciting whiskeys tonight. Absolutely. Um, a great company. Exactly, but I think uh, for the, a lot of people out there, I think the Liberator would be the newest of the three whiskeys. Um, so I, well, I was personally delighted to discover uh, batch one, uh, but we're all going to be here to discover batch two. Um, as I say at each point, uh, we are now on uh, Evera Tree, uh, number three here. Uh, feel free to pour it into your glass, have a nose, have a little sip, don't drink it all because we're going to talk about it in a little bit. Um, but Morris, uh, you look like you're in a very grand library there. I know that we do have a, a pre-warning, I believe. If a storm rolls in, we might lose you because you are in Clarny on, on the on Irish yeah. Wi-Fi. Um, but it's why don't stage, it's a stage set? So. <laughs> Fantastic. But uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, uh, Wayward Spirits, uh, and the Liberator, and then let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about uh, the Tawny Port uh, after all of that. Perfect. Um, we started Wayward Irish Spirits about f four years ago. We started on the, the, the on 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 the journey, uh, and about two years ago, we we uh, uh, got permission for our bonded warehouse here on the estate. Uh, so we we do two things. We call ourselves Whiskey Bonders Plus. Uh, we 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 source with young whiskey as young spirit, which we mature further here. On, in the bonded storehouse and uh, then uh, uh, finish it and blend it and bottle it here. Alongside that, what we mean by plus is that we grow our own barley on the estate. 
which is a separate project which is uh, going to be uh, which goes to be um, distilled for us it gets some small batch malted then distilled for us and then comes back here to be matured the first of that was was put into cask about 18 months ago and it's actually looking really interesting now and that will be um, a project that will carry on and eventually we're going to be uh, distilling on site just the grains that we're growing here on the estate and alongside that, we'll carry on the bonding because it's a fantastic, a fantastic uh, opportunity to see what you can make out of different distillates. And we've been very lucky in 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 the stuff we bought. We bought recently from a number of uh, distilleries, including including Clonic Hilty. Their their new make will be uh, is maturing for us now, and uh, that'll be part of uh, uh, a blend in God knows how many years' time. In a few years, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so, we, so two years ago, October, we got permission for the bonded storehouse, and we got the first whiskies in then to to mature and finish. And it took us until February the 29th to launch the Liberator Malt in Tawny Port, uh, straight into COVID. But who is to know that was going to happen? But at least we got your quarantine whiskey of the month, so we could do with another quarantine now, maybe. <laughs> Oh, let's let's hope not. But uh, a continued success, no doubt. Um, so uh, Paul McDermott's just on on Twitter, and he's asking. He's jumping the gun a little bit, but I'll allow it. Uh, he wants to know what's the difference between uh, the Liberator Batch One and Batch Two. So why don't you give us a little quick rundown of what Batch One was, and then okay. perhaps a good point to jump into Batch Two. Right. Um, batch One, we really wanted to make a statement with it, and it's very port forward. Uh, it was uh, the inaugural release was 25% uh, 2006 Cooley, and the balance was 2015 Great Northern malt. So it was two malts, not two, two single malts. Um, I say it could be a blended malt anywhere else, but in Ireland it's just a malt whiskey. Trying to explain that to people is complicated. So uh, we our distributors took to telling people that it's a double malt, so uh, so twice as good as a single malt. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what the technical file says about that, but probably doesn't approve. So batch two, um, the the spirit had been another six months in the cask and uh, so it so it softened a bit there we changed the blend a bit so it's now 22 percent 2006 cooley and the balance is now about five year old great northern and it's the younger spirit that's been in the younger whiskey that's been in the tawny port casks for up to a year some of them some of the casks were nine months some were 12 months and they were really fresh tawny port casks which we we uh, got from I sourced them directly in Portugal, and uh, they were disgorged there and checked in the local cooperage, and then uh, uh, shipped here and refilled within three weeks. So uh, if you buy it from a wholesaler, it could be six, nine months, twelve months before cask is refilled. So the really it was really fresh. So that made a big difference to it. So what uh, possessed you to, to go and uh, track down your own? Well, I, I actually could start that question uh, or, or add, add that starting to many questions. Yeah. Um, but what possessed you to go and track down your own uh, port casks for, for these uh, offerings of your double or blended malts? I assumed that was the way it was done. So uh, I, I didn't know any better. But as it turned out, it was, it was a really good decision. Uh, my wife has family up in the north of Portugal, so we know quite a lot of people in the port wine business, and that led us to to well, that led me to learning Portuguese a few years back. And this has been the only use I've made of the Portuguese. I actually negotiated for these in Portuguese, so it's an even greater surprise that they turned out as well as they did. Uh, <laughs> but it was through those contacts we 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 found the casks and. Uh, and a cooperage in Porto to to check them for us. Very good. Uh, they say a lot in the the science world that the majority of the innovation comes from people outside of the science world uh, looking in. So perhaps it's exactly what we needed was somebody looking in <laughs> at the beginning and going off and sourcing their own casts. 
So why, uh, what, what led you to uh, deciding that uh, turning your own barley into, into distillates and turning uh, other distillates into blended malts uh, and, and creating a, a bonded warehouse on site? Because I've, I've dealt with, with, with revenue and fire officers before. Uh-huh. They're, they're not fond of putting bonded warehouses anywhere. Um, no, exactly. But we're sort of in the middle of nowhere, so it, it, that that part of it is 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 okay. I mean, the the family were in the booze business illegally up until about eighteen twenty. So when we first applied to the revenue for permission to open a bonded storehouse, they they were sort of, the local guy was an amateur historian, and he was tickled pink that we were actually asking for permission now to have a to have approval. Um, the we've grown. Uh, barley for feed here for years and I, I thought it would be a good idea to to use it for something more more uh, uh, that gives more pleasure than than animal feed and uh, so uh, malting barley is is as it turns out to be rather a difficult thing to to do in our particular climate here because we're very it's very wet and we've got the Gulf Stream nearby and it's wet and humid uh, it's not the best country for growing barley but but we we've managed it and uh, we've had three good crops now so we're, we're getting better at it you've personally it would actually be much cheaper just to buy the barley in and 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 use that but it was important to me to to have something from the land because that's what it's all about as far as i'm concerned um it's, yeah it'd be, it's, some, it'd be something to be buying in malting barley while you're growing hectares of of feed barley well, it's hardly hectares. The first, the first crop was was just ten tons, and five of that was malted and five was unmalted. We took it to Great Northern to be distilled, and they, their silos are thirty tons each. But all credit to John Teeling and and uh, Brian up there, they emptied two thirty-ton silos to take five tons of my barley in each. So uh, we're very pleased with what they've done for us there. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, and alongside that, the bonding was 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 uh, a wonderful opportunity to 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 play with things. Um, it must be it must be quite the playground. It is, yes, <laughs> tempting and, playground as well. Exactly, and when it comes down to the actual blending of the casts and and the kind of monitoring the casts, how are you finding that element, or are are you do you work with other parties as well? Scary as hell. You don't know. You, I mean, it's wood. You're not entirely sure what's going to come out at the end. The the tawny pork cast was so so fresh that uh, we didn't know how long to leave them in there. So the furthest we left them in was twelve months, and that 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 had just gone a bit too far. Uh, but uh, we have uh, two blenders that that help us, and between the three of us, we decide. Um, well, I'm always pushing to have more of the port influence stock into a blend, um, and uh, so I have to push my corner there against <laughs> the other two. But uh, so very good. Uh, Beardy Dave has come back in, and he wants to know what's the reasoning behind the bottle shape. He says it's very unique and eye-catching on the shelf. You've answered your question. Uh, you have to stand out on the shelf these days. I really wanted a decanter-shaped <laughs> bottle. And uh, this was the nearest we could get to it in a practical bottle. And we wanted something that that would be that would be a pleasure to to give and to receive. And I particularly like the way that when you open the bottle, the noise is just is just particularly special. It's it's uh, it makes it a joy to open it for me anyway. And it's a bigger joy when other people buy a bottle and open it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then we have the other David Cummings coming back in saying he's non bearded <laughs> handsome Dave. He wants to know what your plans are for batch three. Oh, God. Well, we're not, we're, we haven't even thought of it yet. At the moment, we are uh, just waiting for the labels for Liberate a Small Batch, which is going to be available next week, which is a blended, a blended whiskey. Um, the, uh, so that's the next, the next, uh, Thing on the agenda, uh, we've got to go up to a uh, to pick up the labels in a in a filling station up the M7 tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, uh, <laughs> and uh, then there's a cast strength version of the small batch as well, um, which 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 has been well received. So there's a lot there's a lot happening. We haven't even we've got to get through batch two yet before we uh, 
before we get on to match three. Exactly, exactly. Ewan Patterson down in uh, Clonakilty Distillery yeah. saying he's uh, really enjoying this one, so congratulations. Um, Matt Pritchard coming back and saying, uh, have you looked at using red wine casks rather than the fortified wines? Uh, yes, we, we have some. Some of our, our pot still is in uh, Neoc casks as well. Um, uh, so um, we're using that. And we, we've also got some... Um, some uh, rum casks and uh, sherry casks, and um, we, we're building up a library that we can that we can blend, that we that we can play with and, and blend and make new expressions that are unique. Oh, fantastic! We've we've a lot of people who seem very happy with this one now. Okay. Um, Dahi O'Connell from WD O'Connell Whiskey Merch saying, "Nice progression from uh, from batch one. Well done." Uh, but probably uh, a perfect time to actually stick the nose in. And Morris, if you if you could give us a little, um, I suppose, uh, of your analysis of, of this whiskey here, because this this nose just jumps out at me uh, yeah. quite a lot. Yeah, the nose is fantastic. Uh, it's all red berries and uh, raspberries. There's a, a little bit of lemon zest there, I guess. Um, yeah. And uh, cherries and... Uh, there's a bit of there's a malty nose there as well. Somebody say co coffee there, right? Yeah, there's a there's a good few coffee notes coming through uh, from Paul here yeah. as well. Yeah, yes, I mean it, it, all these things come up when other people tell you. Um, yeah, of course, and th that's the great thing about whiskey as well. It's it's subjective, and and then the power of suggestion helps as well sometimes. Because on the nose, for me, you mentioned the citrus and the lemon. I actually get this very zesty orange tangerine figs but then underneath the yeah. treacle I, I hate it when people mention figs because once once they then they start on fig rolls and you can't get it out of your head uh and well, the, figs I mean, are, the figs are there i can't stop it but they are there. exactly but, but uh fig rolls is also a great description uh in its own right because it's a com uh, people i find hilarious uh people are very afraid of saying something smells or tastes like something they've tasted before but it's not a tasting note it could be fig rolls or bubble gum or or a fruit salad but they're just compounded tasting notes so fig rolls is just malt and figs and that's, yeah. and that's yeah, exactly yeah, what's yeah, yeah. Um, i think it's fantastic uh matt pritchard saying he's getting grapefruit on the nose again that citrus coming through mm. um and uh, and then, wow, uh, Gareth Spence coming through with a full set of uh, tasting notes there. It'd be a little bit too much to pull up. Uh, Dave, David Cummings coming through with fig rolls and capitals. So he seems very enthused by the fig rolls here. Um, I can see a few of the guys in, in the background who are on already on the show uh, swirling and enjoying this glass. 46% um, uh, ABV, Morris. So you're, you're going down the non-chill filtered route? Absolutely. Um, the... Uh yeah, everything we do, we do as much as we can. Apart from the distillation, we do it in house here. Um, we blend, finish, and bottle here. So we could send it somewhere to be fil chill filtered, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure that you don't lose a lot by doing that. So uh, it makes it it makes it a more expensive product, unfortunately. But uh, have a world of revenue about that. <laughs> exactly uh, and it keeps in a lot of those oils as well so uh, i'm enjoying it myself i think a lot of people are as well uh anyone uh in there who has any questions do fire them in just as we're as we're coming towards the end of the show here um recommended retail price with irish malts i think is around 65 euro if that it might is be 65 correct. that's right yeah uh, and don't forget, folks, that if you are uh, looking to buy any of these bottles, have a look at the bottom just beneath there. Use your code Final Preview to get free shipping on any of the seventy uh, or seven hundred ml bottles uh, that we're talking about tonight on Irish malts. And um, if there's, uh, I suppose, anything about the Liberator brand itself that you want people out there to know uh, who might not have experienced the brand before, what is what is kind of the the top line t elevator pitch? information you'd like people to take away with them uh from tasting the liberator um because i'm just going to sit back and enjoy this glass to be honest. <laughs> yeah th thanks for leaving me that uh, Matt. <laughs> just, um go out and try it is all, all i'd ask um, it, and hopefully you'll like it um we've got the small batch liberate small batch coming out this week at 49 euros and that's 45 percent um and uh, 
that's a that's a, a blended blended whiskey, but it's a, a premium blend with about forty two percent malt in it um, and fifty eight percent grain. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty beefy. Uh, if you're looking for the Liberator, is an, is I, I believe the batch one was an Irish only exclusive. I might have been incorrect about that. Um, it, that it, that's that's as far as we got with it. There were seven hundred bottles. Um, Ireland took that happily. The batch two is a thousand numbered bottles. Uh, the small batch will be about three thousand bottles, but they'll be numbered as well. Um, and that's that's going international. We've got our first um, export order going out on Wednesday, which is very exciting and not a little terrifying. Um, yeah, I have one of the O'Donovans bringing up uh, one of the messages here. He wants to know from John Kumi, uh, what is the background the name and the brand? Um, Daniel O'Connell, the Liberator, was my great, great, great grand uncle. Uh, and uh, so um, that's that's why we use the, use the name. Um, the um, Wayward Irish Spirits is 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 called after what the British Prime Minister called Daniel O'Connell. He called him that Wayward Irishman. So uh, we sort of took that on board with pride, and uh, we call it. We say we say we're uh, wayward, proudly wayward since 1661, which is when the English Parliament brought in excise duty, so that our business of importing wines and spirits from Spain and Portugal became illegal. So we didn't want to stop that. So we carried on, we started smuggling then, hence wayward since 1661. Fantastic. Julia Nerny uh, dropping in to say hello. She's delighted to see you. Hello, Julia. Uh, yourself and myself there. Um, Liam, Liam O'Reilly in the UK, he wants to know, are miniatures available? Um, now I will say before you answer this question, they are still available if you want to check out the three drams tasting kit. You'll be able to taste everything here. They are still available. Um, you can watch back on this uh, on YouTube or on the, the three drams website when it goes live in November. Um, but those are still available if you want to catch up after the fact. But that's more of a question to you, Morris. Uh, are Liberator miniatures yep. available? Uh, I suspect this might this might be a question from uh, John Fleming at Carry Out in Killarney, who's been pestering me for miniatures for the last three months, and I've been promising them week after week after week. Yep, but they they are on their way. Um, yeah, we need a bit of headspace to do that, and uh, in the next three or four weeks, yeah, we will we will do them, and hopefully a tasting pack for Christmas as well. Fantastic. Oh, Christmas presents. Exactly. Uh, Dahi O'Connell signing off and saying he's enjoyed this evening. Uh, Beardy Dave dropping back in to say he's enjoying your candor and the way you talk about your whiskey is well done. Um, excuse me. And Paul saying he's loving the, the brand background and embracing the Irish heritage roots, history and pride. So it's launched to you. One last question in before we, we sign off. Um, oh, there, I wonder <laughs> about the, the percentage of the cast strength small batch and what the retail price might be? Uh, the the cast strength small batch, uh, we, we only brought it on as a, as a, uh, as a sample for a, a tasting on, on, online recently. And I was just blown away by the response. So I, I promised to bring out uh, uh, 140 half bottles at, uh, at 55 euros. And, uh, Half of those have gone, and the rest are going on allocation to to Irish malts and a couple of other people. Uh, so, and the the ABV is sixty two point one percent. Nice, uh, nice, healthy yeah. ABV. Well, Morris, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Liberator Irish whiskey, uh, Tawny Port Finish Batch Two, a uh, thousand bottles. Uh, and a, a blended malt, 22% uh, 2006 malt, and then the remainder of uh, G&D, five-year-old, 46% ORP, 65-year-old. I think that's the top that's line. Right. Yep. Right yep. Well, thank you so much for your time and signing in from Killarney. Uh, I very much appreciated it. Um, I'm going to bring back on John O'Connell uh, from Irish Malts and Three Drams, who has been sitting by patiently in the back uh, but Morris uh, thank you very much much appreciated and uh, we'll see you again thank you very much Matt and thank you everyone for listening perfect if you have any more questions do put them down there and we can send them on to Morris as well to get more answers for you guys but don't forget 
that we have code uh, final preview. If anyone wants to buy any of the whiskeys you've been tasting tonight in your full 700 ml bottles uh, on irishmalts.com, uh, the offer is valid until the 8th. So you've got a week to get on there and pick up uh, your favorite, if not all of the bottles you've tasted tonight. And I am delighted to welcome back uh, Mr. John O'Donovan, the man who put this all together uh, for whom we would not be here. Uh, the founder of Three Drams uh, and Irish Malts. Sir, welcome back. Thank you. I feel like a proud parent here uh, after somebody who's been um, planning this club for the bones of a year. Uh, I think it's been spectacular. It was intense. Uh, you know, there's a there's a lot of um, tastings going on, uh, but we're going to deliver one tasting a month in a structured way on the second Thursday of every month. And I mean, if, if this episode is I need to go by, I'm already looking forward to next month. There's just one or two things I want to say, Matt. First of all, uh, thank you for hosting tonight's episode. Um, thanks to Morris, thanks to Paul, thanks to Sabina, and most importantly, thanks to everybody who took part. Uh, you kind of alluded to it already, but to give further background on this final preview, we created 250 of this particular kit with these three whiskies. About 200 of them sold prior to the episode. Uh, so there's about 50 left in stock. Uh, people who are, who are possibly watching this later on or after the fact, this will be recorded and will be available on multiple channels, YouTube, Facebook, and then, of course, on the website when it lands. So if you want to take part, you can still take part. There's still a couple of kits left. Um, we mentioned all the featured whiskies are available on rsmalls.com with free shipping until the 8th of October. That will be running for the next week. And November's tasting, the three whiskies are already locked in and secured. They are as good as what we've had tonight. So if people are interested, keep an eye out. We're going to, you know, we're going to announce every month we're going to announce the tasting on the first of the month and then the second third of every month will be the live tasting so that's the update for me matt um, perfect there's, there's a lot of questions there's a lot of questions coming in now about the three drama subscription the first one is where do you sign up at the moment go to three drams.com Enter your email address and your first name, that's it, and we'll notify you next month when the November tasting goes live. You'll also get a notification on the 1st of November, which is exactly one month from now when the actual website will go live. That will be full of information on the subscriptions. I think I said earlier, you can subscribe monthly, quarterly. You can buy one-off kits to take part on a one-by-one -one basis. There's a bit of merchandise. It's going to be epic. So looking forward to revealing it all next month. Yeah, and uh, people have been asking what uh, are the subscription options. So it's monthly, bi-monthly, half-yearly, yearly, so on. Yeah, so we have monthly, which will be the most, which will be the best price subscription. So if you subscribe monthly, that will be the best price. Uh, It'll be bi-monthly, which is one every two months and there'll be quarterly which is one every three months outside of those three options there will be a chance or an opportunity to buy one kit on a one-off basis or two or three separate to that there's going to be a gifting section so if somebody in your life christmas birthday there's going to be a couple of gift options which give like a three-month subscription which they can carry on later on if the, the recipient likes it and there's a couple of goodies, let's say goodies are, you know, extras to the kit that will come with the gifting as well. So like we have quite a lot of things still to reveal. This is just really only the very start. This really is a club for Irish whiskey. And um, it's, uh, it's, su it's super exciting. Uh, tonight has been fantastic. I, I think uh, one thing that might be interesting uh, in retrospect, um, for everyone who's still listening and still enjoying, who's had a few drams and tashcons along with us, uh, drop into the comments uh, what your favorite is. Don't want to know what your least favorite was. I don't want a ranking system, just the one that was the standout for you. Uh, I think it'd be cool for the producers to be able to see um, what, what people uh, have been enjoying the most. 
Um, we won't uh, talk about it on the show here. Just if anyone wants to go back and have a look, it'll be very interesting to see what you guys out there thought um, of the kit. I, for one, uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, I think it'll be a very cool uh, subscription service. Um, and uh, yeah, so I guess uh, for everyone to go on to 3drams.com, put in those details, you're going to get that uh, information from yourself and it's going to be uh, uh, November 1st for the next email, if that's correct, yeah? November 1st, we'll announce November <coughs> November's... Uh, three whiskies they're locked in in fact december's whiskies are locked in but we'll announce every month on the first so there is a wild mix going from the smallest producers in the country up to the biggest so uh, i would say so far matt we've had about seven or eight hundred people register interest in this club so the, you know, the more people that get involved in these online tastings, the more people that get involved, the better access the club has to get, you know, better whiskies, more exclusives, et cetera, et cetera. So we use some of the relationships that we've built, you know, running Irishmoss.com to start the club off. But as we grow the club over the years, it should have, if you're into Irish whiskey in any way, it should be the place, it will be the place to be. Absolutely. And it's different. It's different other subscription services. You've got your monthly online tasting with the producers. You're getting whiskeys that are not the general run of the mill, your bog standard entry level originals of, you know, uh, you're getting the unique, the different, the new, very exciting. I mean, tell me how many people out there have had all three of these whiskeys before tonight. Um, do keep telling us your favorite whiskeys in the comment sections because uh, everyone has a different option and a different opinion there. Uh, Eleanor, uh, Eleanor is saying that she loves our t-shirts. I'm not going to lie. I am enjoying these polo necks. Um, I've had a fantastic time, John. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. Um, and to our guests, uh, for giving up uh, your time on a Thursday evening. I think one of the things we often forget in the whiskey industry is that everyone who works for one of the whiskey companies has a day job. They were in work at eight o'clock this morning. They clocked out at five or six o'clock this evening. Paul's probably gone back to go to stilling uh, as well at this point of the evening. There's a lot of extra time given. Um, I very much appreciate, and I'm sure you do as well, them giving up their time to talk through all of these whiskeys and not only just talk through them, also produce them, sign them up to this. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, much yeah, appreciate. Matt, just, 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 you know, just before we end off, I, it is piles of comments pouring in here, and it's really refreshing to see that everybody has a different favorite. So, you know, as you said earlier, the palate is subjective, the taste is subjective to a degree. Um, it's just, it's fantastic to see that everybody in the, in the comments is getting, you know, equal shout outs. So I would say fair play to all the producers. I'm sure that, I'm sure the guys, I can see Paul and Sabine and Mars there. Guys, I'm sure it's not the last time you're going to be featuring whiskey on Three Rams. So you'll be welcome back in the future. Um, excellent, Matt. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, fantastic. And just to do a quick one, the dram number one was the Lambe Malt Irish Whiskey. Dram number two was the Clonakilty Cognac Finish uh, Cast Strength Single Cask for Irish Malts. And then dram number three was the Liberator Tawny Port Batch 2. Um, John, thank you so much for having me. Uh, everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm going to leave you with this lovely sign. Uh, remember, official launch is November 1st. Uh, Slauncha and uh, good night, John. All right, good night, Matt. Thanks to everybody. Slaunch. Bye bye.